Please stand and sing with us. seated. Well, good evening and Merry Christmas. Welcome to Cornerstone Faith Community Church for this very special Christmas Eve candlelight worship gathering. We are so glad that you are able to be with us tonight for worship. As we begin our time of worship this evening, would you join me in a responsive call to worship as we gather our hearts together uh, to worship the Christ child? Behold, brothers and sisters, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be for all people. For today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born, which is Christ the Lord. Glory Glory to God in the highest. On earth, peace and goodwill toward all. Our God is the God whom even heaven cannot contain. Today, he has come to dwell among his people to be our light and our life. Glory to God in the highest heaven. Let the angels praise him. Let all the peoples praise him. For great is our God and greatly to be praised. Unto us a child has been born. Unto us a son has been given. His name has been called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of his government and his rule there shall be no end. Glory to God. We sing glory to God in the highest heavens and here on earth below. For he has redeemed us from our fallen state 
with this precious gift of life. The Lord reigns, mighty in strength and powerful to save us. Let us bless the Lord. Holy, holy, holy is, is the Lord God, God Almighty. The heavens and the earth are full of your glory. Hallelujah. Heaven has come to us. The king has been born. Glory to God in the highest.
you please join me in a prayer of illumination? Let us pray. Oh God, you who made this holy night to shine with the blessed brightness of the one true light, Jesus Christ, our only Savior. We ask you now that as we gather together in this place to hear once again the story of Jesus, that you might illumine our hearts and ignite our spirits by the power of of your Holy Spirit. May we come to know the fullness of your joy because of the gift that you gave to us that night so long ago. Father, all this we pray through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is Isaiah 9, 1 through 7. Nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those who were in distress. In the past, he humbled the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, but in the future, he will honor Galilee of the nations by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light on those living in the land of deep darkness. A light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this.
The second reading, the second reading is Isaiah 40, 1 through 5. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice of one calling. In the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level, the rugged places a plain. And the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all people will see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken.
The third reading is Micah chapter 5, verses 1 through 4. Marshal your troops now, city of troops, for a siege is laid against us. They will strike Israel's ruler on the cheek with a rod. But you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. Therefore, Israel will be abandoned until the time when she who is in labor bears a son, and the rest of his brothers return to join the Israelites. He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they will live securely, for then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth. The fourth reading is Luke 1, verses 26 through 38. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and the angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. 
His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she, who was said to be unable to conceive, is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. The fifth reading is is Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 14. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. And everyone there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. 
While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. The sixth reading is Luke 2, 15 through 20. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told to them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying, the, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told.
John chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The beauty of this night is in its light. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Amen? Amen. Before he came from heaven to dwell with us, this world was full of darkness and void of any true and hopeful light. But once Jesus arrived, all of that changed. Hope was here. True light was here. Light had dawned upon this earth for the very first time. Heaven was right here with us. And so tonight, we will light our candles as a reminder of that hope. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. The light which no darkness can ever overcome. John chapter 1, beginning at verse 9. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet, to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, 
he gave the right to become children, children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of a human decision or of a husband's will, but children born of God.
brothers and sisters, as you are able, carefully, would you please stand for the blessing of God the Father. As we prepare to leave this place tonight, brothers and sisters, go with Jesus Christ, who is the light of the world, the light that no darkness can ever overcome. Go then, with the greatest gift ever given, the gift of the Savior of the world, and go with the love of God our Father, the grace and mercy of Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit to be yours this day and forevermore. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, 
Son and Holy Ghost. Amen. Jesus Christ is born today. Amen.